The following video is produced by University of Vermont Extension. For more information, visit uvm.edu slash extension. Vermont's observance of the 150th anniversary of the Civil War is well underway, and in many ways it's centered right here on the 1859 State House. That building opened less than two years before the Civil War began, and it looks almost the same inside and out as it did then. Some interesting history happened on this State House lawn. A 100-foot flagpole was put up here as the war began, and war rallies were held around it. And then, at the end of the war, a scaffold was built, supposedly, for the hanging of Confederate President Jefferson Davis. We're in the Vermont House of Representatives, perhaps the most famous room in all of Vermont, and it looks today almost exactly as it did at the time of the Civil War. The same chandelier, the same seats, and the same speaker's rostrum. In 1862, John Phelps came back from Louisiana, having resigned from the Army after General Benjamin Butler refused to let him enlist black men into the Army. He came back and he spoke here to a rousing reception. He said, the sun never looked down upon a greater evil than American slavery. In ruling this great nation of slaves, we have to a degree become enslaved ourselves. Many of the things said here had a ring of human freedom. Perhaps the greatest moment in this room happened on May 9th, 1865, when the legislature met in an extra session to consider whether to ratify the 13th Amendment, which outlawed slavery. The vote was 169 to nothing, and when the vote was announced, a 100-gun salute was fired on the State House lawn. Republican Governor Erastus Fairbanks asked the legislature to appropriate a half a million dollars to begin the war effort. But that wasn't enough, according to many, including Representative Stephen Thomas, a Democrat from West Fairley. He rose to say this, until this rebellion shall have been put down, I have no friends to reward and no enemies to punish. And I trust that the whole strength and power of Vermont both of men and money, will be put into the field to sustain the government. Thomas would go on to lead the 8th Vermont Regiment in the Civil War, including in its suicidal and brave stand at Cedar Creek. Soldier reunions were held in this hall, and years after the Civil War, Stephen Thomas came back, and he spoke of his comrades no longer with him. Their memory is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. They need no eulogy, for it is written in letters of living light. Abraham Lincoln had used the analogy of gold and silver to talk about the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, how they should always be considered together because the Declaration of Independence guaranteed that all men are created equal and should be treated equal, he was talking about human freedom. Here in the Senate chamber, all the seats are numbered. This has been called the most beautiful room in Vermont, and it may well be. After the Civil War, a war record was an essential thing to a political career and a lot of veterans got elected to the Senate. In fact, some 95 Civil War veterans served in this room. The numbers haven't changed. Here in seat 22 sat George Grenville Benedict, longtime editor of the Burlington Free Press, who won a Medal of Honor at Gettysburg. In the seat beside him, seat 23, 
Wheelock Vasey served from Springfield. Wheelock Vasey commanded the 16th Vermont Regiment at Gettysburg in the flank attack on Pickett's Charge and then turned his men around and launched another flank attack on a supporting Confederate attack. Long after the war, he became national commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, the great veterans organization. And right down at the end of this row, at the last desk, it was occupied by Redfield Proctor. Redfield Proctor, who led the 15th Vermont Regiment to Gettysburg, who later served as Secretary of War. Beloved by his soldiers, he welcomed them all to Proctor for a great reunion years after the war. In Proctor, he had founded the Vermont Marble Company. Vermont, of course, has a remarkable Civil War history, but it is nowhere as present, perhaps, as in the Cedar Creek Room of the State House. And an old friend of mine is with us today, David Sheets, the curator of the State House. David, there's some new things in this old room. There are. We've never been able to truly bring alive perhaps the two parts of the State House that resonate with the Civil War the most. And that's this room, the Cedar Creek Room, which of course has this magnificent painting behind us that was commissioned for the State House as perhaps Vermont's most important Civil War memorial. And then the flag collection, which we've worked for decades to conserve, but in the aftermath of that, not been able to do much with the, ca the empty cases. So now we have these glorious uh, exhibits that actually, uh, with this significant anniversary for the Civil War, are coming alive in a new way for the State House, and we're very, very proud of them. In this room, we've never had a very effective way of explaining this, this magnificent painting to the public unless they had the benefit of a tour. Um, we get so many casual visitors to the State House that we needed a more active way of bringing this to life. And as you know, we have now these wonderful stanchions in front of the painting that explain the battle and also explain the significant story of how Julian Scott actually painted the battle for this building. The Civil War lasted four years. We're in the middle of a four-year Civil War sesquicentennial. If you come to the State House in the next four years, you'll see these exhibits and understand Vermont in the Civil War.